I am 25 years HIV positive. I first contracted HIV in New York City. They told me at that time I had two years left to live because most of the people that were getting it back then, that's all they lived. When HIV was first noticed and coming about, we really focused on keeping people that were negative, negative. And we didn't put a whole lot of focus on people that were positive. Each year, about 40,000 new people in the U.S. are infected. The man who infected me said, man, I was really hoping it wouldn't happen to you. And in disbelief, <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, what did you just say? He was diagnosed about three years before we met and just never dealt with it. If somebody would have sat down with him and said, this is what's going on, you can live with this. We just need to give you the steps in order to do that. I may not have to be here right now talking. I was given a death sentence. And so my behavior was consistent with thinking I was going to die. You know, I really got into my um, uh, drug use. Now people are living longer, they're living healthier lives, and they're, because of the medications and their longer lifespan, are probably having more sex, having more relationships with people. And so the even more reason why prevention is so important now versus, say, 20 years ago. People who are drug addicted, people who have psych issues, people who have self-esteem issues, people who are in and out of jail, that's a huge part of what the new HIV is. As a disease, it's changed and we need to change the way that we're looking at it. A lot of the research that's out there so far will show that a large portion, like 80, 75 percent to 80 percent of people who are HIV positive are not putting themselves or others at risk for either transmitting HIV or acquiring another STD. When I think of prevention, I'm thinking that you are fighting a preventable illness. Right now we have a raging issue that we need to address. When patients are asked, would you like your provider to discuss risk or would it be okay if your provider discussed ongoing risk of transmitting HIV? or would it be okay for your provider to ask about behavioral risk? Patients invariably say yes. They would like their provider to bring up these issues. Providers play key roles in, in giving prevention messages to all patients because providers are trusted and because providers see patients in private situations where it's easier to have those conversations. None of us like to talk about sex and you know in the patient provider relationship oftentimes you're, you're uh, distant acquaintances at best with your patient um, and it's difficult to talk about sort of the touchy-feely issues around sex and condom use. If your provider's not talking to you about everything that you want to know about you need to bring it up and especially if they're not talking to you about your risk behaviors related to HIV transmission. There is nothing to fear, just so you know that. Um, when you're talking to a doctor, all doctors know that people have sex. It's, you know, doctors have sex, you know, I'm assuming. So why lie to them? You don't have to lie to them. Just tell them what you're doing. Be, oh, take a deep breath and let it out. My discomfort at asking the questions might be alleviative if I can just remember this is something that's really important. You do need to have a very open and honest relationship with your doctors and if you feel that you have a doctor that you can't talk to about everything, um, then maybe you should ask to see another doctor. You don't have to do it all in one visit. If I can just get you thinking about being safer, then the next time you come in, we can go to the next step and think about things that you could actually do to be safer. Let's say a doctor comes in, he sees a, a patient, whoever it is, and they're positive, you know, and he starts dictating to them what to do, right? I don't think that's going to work. Probably the reason why the patient doesn't listen because he doesn't feel confident that he's being listened to and really being heard about what he's going through. There has to be more dialogue, a more uh, team approach to care as opposed to um, a hierarchy to where I'm doing something for you as opposed to I'm doing something with you. We have two separate hierarchies, one for sex and one for drugs. 
A lot of people think that once you're HIV positive, you're never going to have sex again. And I just want to clear that right now and say that some of the best sex that I've ever had in my life, I've had since I became HIV positive. Number one, because I've learned to communicate about what I have. Number two, because I've learned to tell people what I like and find out what they like. Men on the down low, doctors never talked to me about that. I didn't know what men on the down low meant. Men that have sex with other men, but they don't think that they're gay and they have wives. My husband that was that way too. He was screwing everybody else in the book. Come home and screw me too. And that's why I got so sick. I have used drugs in my life. Do not share your equipment. If you're an HIV positive person, that HIV virus will live in your needle if you're injecting drugs. And you can pass it along by a broken crack pipe if you've got cuts on your lips. Do not lie to your doctors if you are using drugs because that is very important in determining what is wrong with you. It's not based upon one shoe fits everybody. It depends upon what that person is doing in their own set of risk behaviors and in their own relationships. Using drugs, having sex with 12 people in a week, whatever the issue is, and then when they admit, okay, I'm doing it, then what I try to do is go to the next level, which is I'm not happy about it. They had the health department on me, and. I was spooked out and I was in an abusive relationship. I was using crack cocaine. I had a T cell count of like 164 virus that was in the millions. I, I didn't know what was going on with me. I was wasting I had lesions growing on my body. I had hair loss. These doctors knew all these things. They even knew that I was going through domestic violence. They knew that I was in addiction. They could see me better than I could even see my own self. They were the ones who directed me in the direction of, you know, I just go see this doctor for drug addicts. Start seeing the uh, psychiatric doctor uh, that was um, referred by my primary care person. And they put me on a mild um, um, antidepressant. I was amazed at the effect it had. It takes the expert or somebody that knows what they're looking for to detect. As with any behavior change, the more you do it, the more comfortable you do it, the more it becomes second nature. Talking about sex and drugs is so taboo. And having done research and worked here at the health department for so many years, I don't even think about it. it doesn't even bother me. All right, tell me what's going on. And so I think we just need to start taking that at risk and start talking about these issues. As an HIV positive person, I'm not only protecting myself from anything that they have, because that's far more of a fright to me. Whatever they could be going through could kill me. But also for their sake, I want them to know that I'm concerned for their health. In 25 years, Honestly, don't believe I've ever passed this illness on to anyone else, and that's very important to me that I don't. I don't have HIV. I'm living with HIV. It's a part of who I am. And if you get that understanding and you realize that life does go on, then I think you are, have a, a healthier attitude on how you're dealing with this and how to put it in perspective and not be angry. HIV is everyone's problem, whether you're infected or affected. It's something that the entire society needs to embrace and, and, and fight towards eradicating.